Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to show you all how to determine limits and continuity of a function from a graph. So we have a graph of f of x here and we want to determine these limits. Now some of the ideas we can make use of when we're trying to determine limits is that a limit doesn't exist when there's a jump in the graph or when there's an asymptote. So notice here there's a gap, so right away I'm just looking for locations that fit this description. So I already know where my limits aren't going to exist. The second thing is, um, one of the common traps is people think that a limit doesn't exist when there's a hole in the graph, but there can be a limit when we have a hole in the graph, it's just the function is not defined there. So now we're gonna get started with this. So for the first one, we're looking for the limit as x approaches two. And remember, when we're actually trying to find the limits, the limit itself is a y value, so we should ultimately be looking at the y axis for that part. So the limit as x approaches 2, I'm going to go in the neighborhood of 2, and I'm going to look at it from the left side and the right side. So I'm kind of focusing on what's happening to the graph as I approach 2 from the left and from the right. Now this is not part of the graph, but this also helps too if you imagine, like where am I heading to on this dotted line? on my graph and see that we're heading towards the x-axis from the left and right side and the x-axis means we're at a height of zero or y equals zero so our answer to the first one the limit as x approaches two is zero now for the limit as x approaches negative two you see how the graph is nice and connected in that neighborhood so around x equals negative two we're heading towards a height of negative one so if we use this to help us with the visual in the neighborhood of negative two, the graph is heading towards a height of negative one. So that's our second limit. All right, now this one will throw some people off. The limit as x approaches negative one because the graph has a hole in it at x equals negative one. But remember, you have to be careful here we can have a limit at a location where there's a hole in the graph. It's more about like what's happening as we get close to negative one, but not necessarily including negative one. So if we put this dotted line here in place to help us visualize, you could see that we're heading to a height of one. So as we come in from the left side and the right side, we're approaching a y value of one. Okay, so remember, we're not necessarily looking for the function value we're saying, where are we headed as we get closer to x equals negative one? Our y values are getting closer to y equals one. Now for this part, the limit as x approaches one, the plus sign tells us that we're only approaching from the right side. So we're gonna approach one from the right side. So we'll bring this over here to help us visualize. If we look at this part of the graph, remember this would be x approaches one from the left side, so we're only interested in this piece here. And we're really asking ourselves, what y value are we heading towards from this part of the graph? And we're heading towards a y value of negative two. Okay, let's just make that a little neater. So we're heading towards negative two. Now for this part, uh, you have to be very, very careful here. The limit as x approaches three in this case, we're not looking at where the function is defined, we're looking at which height are we heading towards on both pieces of this graph. So if we look here, notice we are heading towards a height of positive two. So this is the limit, this represents the function value at three is equal to one, okay? But the limit, we're heading towards a height of positive two. So that one is probably one of the more challenging ones that you have to be careful with, but once again, the limit as x approaches as x approaches three, the graph is heading towards a height of positive two, but the function value is down here at positive one. Okay, so a very common mistake here would be to say the answer is one, but remember, we're going towards where the graph is headed, not where that lonesome point is. Okay, so for this question, I'll move this visual cue out of the way, but this was uh, the hint here. The limit does not exist when there's a jump or an asymptote. And what we mean by jump is when the graph literally jumps from one location to the next. So in this case, we could say the limit does 
not exist. All right, now part of the question was to explain why the limit doesn't exist. Well, we found part of the work in this question. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right side is negative 2. But if you look up here, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side is heading to a height of positive 1. So in order for a limit to exist, the left and right limits have to be equal. So in this case, since the left and right limits are not equal, the limit does not exist. So I'll just write the reason down here. So the reasoning is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of f of x is equal to positive 1 which is not equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side of f of x, which we said before was equal to negative 2. Okay, so since the left and right limits are not equal, this limit does not exist. All right, now the last part of this question is the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. So you see how in this part of the graph, everything is nice and connected. So if we look here, we can see that the limit in this case is exactly equal to the function value and the graph when x equals 0 is heading towards a height of negative 1. So the limit as x approaches 0 is negative 1. Okay, for the second part of this question, we need to determine if the function is continuous at you know various x values. So the three conditions that must be met in order to show a function is continuous. For one, you have to show that the limit exists at whatever x value you're trying to show it's continuous at. So the limit has to exist, the function has to be defined at that x value, and then last, the limit and the function are equal at that same x value. Um, the three conditions could just be state, uh, stated in the limit definition of continuity. So really those three conditions are just saying this, that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c. So this is like the more textbook way of stating these three conditions. So for the first part, is f continuous at x equals negative 1? Well, like we said before, the graph has a hole in it. So the, for one thing I'd like to say is the, I tell my students the third grade definition of continuity is a function is continuous if I could draw it without lifting my pen off the page. And you see how here, like technically, if there was a hole in the graph, I would have to lift my pen to draw the second piece, which is like this downward sloping line here. So this one, no, it's not continuous at x equals negative 1. And the reason being, the function value um, f is undefined at x equals negative 1. Okay, so the second condition is not met. We have a limit at negative 1, but the function is not defined there. So by uh, the second condition, this function is not continuous. Is the function continuous at 0? This one we could say yes, because you see how I could draw this part of the graph in one motion without lifting my pen off the page. But if I wanted a textbook um, explanation of this, we could say that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x equals negative 1, which is in fact equal to the function value at 0. See how f of 0 is negative 1 and so is the limit? So that shows us that all three conditions are met. The limit exists, the function is defined, and the limit and the function value are equal at x equals 0. Now at x equals 1, we could see visually that this graph is not continuous because there's a break. I can't draw this part of the graph in one motion. I have to physically move my pen from here to here to keep drawing it. But uh, this one is because of the third condition. Um, I'm sorry, we could uh, say this is no because of the first condition. Um, th by the third condition also, it's not continuous. But the first condition is simply enough to say it's not continuous. The limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. So uh, this was something we said on the last slide. The limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does not exist which automatically means that, no, it's not continuous. So that's plenty of evidence to say this function is not continuous at x equals 1. And remember before, we said the limit doesn't exist because the left and right limits are not equal. Now for this last part, is the function continuous at x equals 3? Um, 
this is what we call a removable discontinuity. Uh, so the function is not continuous at x equals 3. And the reason being, the limit exists. The limit's equal to 2, but the function value at 3 is equal to 1. So this is a situation where the limit as x approaches 3 of the function is equal to 2, but that is not equal to the function value at 3, which is equal to 1. So because those two values don't match up, this function is not continuous. Okay, this is going to conclude this video on limits and continuity from a graph. If you found it helpful, please click like and subscribe below. And if you have any requests, please leave it in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.